This week on Aristea 99, we're looking at Hippolyta. Hippolyta is the second half of the Reckless Hearts expansion from 2019. Uh, we're going to take a quick over look over her stats here right now. She's got an issue of four. Don't get too uh, caught up on that, though. Her movement is four. Her energy is five, and her health is four. This is fairly standard stats. That's not a bad thing, though. Her defense is actually kind of interesting. It's a green, a blue, and a black. So she's actually got very solid defense. Um, I don't think... Uh, short of Maximus, I mean, this is just phenomenal, I think. If you look at her uh, bra and her bra roll, that is a blue, so not too bad. It's stopping uh, people from getting away. Her uh, disengage, her agility, is an orange. Now, here's the fun thing, though. Uh, if you look at her character switch for one uh, shield, you can impose the plus two initiative state to an allied character within range 0 to 3 no line of sight required so first off she can go ahead and give it to herself um, and obviously if you could with her excellent defense if you got the defense to spend uh, go for it but the fact that she can do this to someone up to three hexes away and she does not require line of sight meaning smoke's not going to bother her um the wall's not going to bother her, uh, not having direct line of sights, being dazzled, whatever. Uh, these things will not bother her. That's pretty awesome, considering that is really the big thing that Hippolyta brings, is boosting initiative. Now what we're going to look at next would be her three-point attack, Meridium Steel, a red, an orange, a yellow, and a black. Uh, range 1-1, one, one, got to be adjacent, um, line of sight required. So first off, this, much like uh, Axel Steel, has an immediate effect regardless if you have any successes, and that is to impose the minus 2 initiative state to the target. So she's actually got pretty good damage potential here to begin with. Um, she has a reasonable chance of actually hitting her switch character switch off of this and on top of that you're going to be slowing down the opponent's initiative that's kind of impressive especially when you think of some of the characters out there uh, some of the slower characters will basically have even less say in what's going on and then you could possibly bring someone like gata or axel steel uh musashi down to more reasonable levels uh, this is really really an impressive debuff I think when you look about that just because if you win the initiative you decide who goes first you have more control over the game in that particular fashion and she's there to help you get that next up for one point is a green ability inspire it's an orange and a yellow um, so you kinda don't want to get stunned uh, here just because getting a second Success is not going to be the great easiest thing in the world. But you can impose a plus two state to the target. This is range zero to five. No line side required. So this is actually better than her character switch. Um, it's just a little riskier in that there's a chance you might fail it. But at one point, um, you should probably be handing this out a little semi-regularly, I'd say. So, her first passive ability is called Boosted Reflexes. At the beginning of the action step of your activation, you gain as many movement points as your initiative value is over 4. So, if you uh, basically inspire yourself and make her initiative 6, well, she's going to have 2 extra movement points to play with. If it starts fading, well, she's going to have one extra movement point to play with. This is really nice, and I kind of like the fact that it, um, you're gaining movement points, it's not actually affecting the stats, uh, so it doesn't feel too overpowered. It's a nice perk, uh, and it's reason to well, inspire yourself, but it's not, oh my gosh, broken. So that's kind of nice. 
The next passive ability is sort of an interesting one, and it does reflect her battlefield commander nature. It's called Shotdown Leader. Whenever you are sent to the infirmary, remove any state tokens from your allies, which remove their initiative. So, if you've buffed everyone up, you've inspired them, and Hippolyta goes down. Well, um, all those uh, buffed up initiatives go away. Uh, kind of to add insult to injury, if you happen to have had Pavar uh, Pavati on your team. Uh, well, hers would go away too, because it doesn't specify it came from Hippolyta, it just said all of them go away. I kind of like this, it reflects a sort of a demoralizing effect. Um, this would be a case of uh, what some people call um, storytelling through gameplay, which I think is really cool. So, so we're going to look at her tactics now. First off is going to be DDO field. During the action steps of Hippolyta's activation. Until the end of the round, all your allies within range 0 to 3, no line of sight required, may reroll once per roll any number of dice from their defense rolls. Uh, this is a very nice defensive buff. Um, it does mean they kind of need to be close together. Uh, if you want to do a phalanx or something like that, I guess, uh, a spearhead. And so the more, I guess, up cl close and personal they are, the better. Uh, this is not going to benefit Luna, Major Luna, for instance, uh, unless you're all the way back with her in her optimal position. Then you're kind of like, why do I have Hippolyta here in the first place? Uh, this is actually pretty awesome, um, just giving this and having other frontliners like Senior Massacre or uh, Musashi or heaven help me Maximus uh, would be I think this would be a a massive buff uh, this is definitely no worthy right then and there because it doesn't affect just her it affects everyone around her so the implications of that use are just kind of really scary you're going to use this when it's important you're not just going to throw this away uh, if you're not getting at least one other person, I would say most of the time you're wasting it. Um, so obviously, if you want to keep Hippolyta herself alive, she does count as her ally. It's range 0 to 3. Uh, that's fantastic. Uh, but generally speaking, you want to get more people in on this, the better. After that, it's going to be the Amazon Wedge tactic. At the beginning of Hippolyta's action step, Impose the plus two state initiative state to all your allies within range zero to six, no line of sight required. Impose the stunned state to all your enemies within range one to six, line, no line of sight required. Uh, yeah, so this is screaming to be uh, forced out of her hands, to be hit with a no, to be just any number of things um, this is devastating with the proper setup so you need to have allies within range to get the plus two initiative you, you definitely want that but the fact that she can just go up in the middle of a bunch of enemies the opponent team and stun them all at range one to six and again, no, no line of sight required, so if there's no hiding from with smoke, there's Dazzled's is not going to bother her. Um, it's just kind of... Ah, uh, that's just horrifying <laughs> when you get right down to it. Uh, this is a fantastic reason to pick Hippolyta, and a fantastic reason to try and get her out of the game as quickly and as often as possible. <laughs> Uh, no, say no, just say no. After that, we have Clairvoyance. After revealing initiative cards, um, the enemy character has minus three initiative for this comparison. So, you know, it's like, okay, it's the first turn around one or whatever. It's like, okay, we f flip, flip, reveal. Oh, by the way, you're minus three initiative. Um, that is situationally useful. Um, thankfully, it's after revealing the initiative cards. Um, 
simply because, oh, well, this is a high initiative person and there's Maximus and I just wasted it. Um, now, the, the fact you can do it after revealing the initiative cards lets you judge the value of this. Uh, certainly, if uh, you're otherwise tied and you're not underdog, then you want to win it, this would be the card to use. Um, very important right there. So, uh, no, that's uh, situationally useful, um, worth having, uh, but it doesn't have that... It's one of those, it's like, it's going to be more specific when you need it, whereas the others seem to be just crushingly um, devastating <laughs> all around. So, uh, that's Clairvoyance. Then finally, Athena's Blessing. And this is probably one of my favorite uh, cards on her. Uh, during the action steps of Hippolytus' activation, you may remove any state tokens of your choice from any ally that has a modified initiative. Well then, um, yeah, so she actually has a way to selectively clear states. Uh, you're not just removing one and leaving a whole bunch of something icky, and you're not removing all of them, including the beneficial ones. You're taking, picking and choosing the ones you want left on, uh, which are presumably you're going to leave on the good ones, such as positive initiative, or focus, but you're going to get rid of, oh, no dazzle, no mobilize, no minus two initiative or energy, um, all those poison tokens and burning tokens, well, yeah, they're gone too. Um, this is just a beautiful card, and this is one card that is, depending on the opponent's composition, is team composition, is one that you would probably, almost certainly want to get back. Um, it's not as horrifying as her other abilities like DDO Field and certainly not Amazon Wedge, but it's still powerful. And because of that, you know, if they're using uh, Standard or if they're using, uh, say, Tao Wu, um, this might not get Node they're probably going to be more worried of the threat of Amazon Wedge or even DDO just because those just really put such a wrecking on everything else. So, but that is Hippolyta. Um, I think she's really cool. Um, I personally have not had a chance to use her yet. Um, I'm looking forward to doing so sometime soon. Um, my play style tends to be a little more control focused, but that is typically in the form of debuffing that I want to limit what my um, opponents can use and what they can do. I don't do so much personally of the buffing my team and making them better, and when I do it's usually in the context of the tactics cards. Um, I'm picking characters for, you know, for their tactics there, or I'm trying to... Uh, kind of fish those back out, things like that. Uh, so direct buffing, so characters that hand out focus, you know, things like that, are not usually f characters I go for. So I'm looking forward to a chance of using Hippolyta, but I think I need to consider how I want to use her because she kind of encourages um, at least one of your teammates to be a uh, another close to mid-range character. Um, and, you know, the more the merrier, so to speak. Uh, putting her on Team Taunt, uh, which has victimized me before, um, with, say you have Prism, uh, say you have Maximus, say you have uh, Sinner Massacre on a team, uh, you know, they're just, with her, would just be really kind of disturbing. But you know, at the same time, you have to wonder, okay, what's the actual scenario I'm going to be building this team for? Um, this could be a lot of fun in, say, car she could be a lot of fun in maybe Carnage or uh, Blitz, things like that. So, that's kind of rambling. Anyways, uh, that is Apolita. Like, comment, and subscribe. And next week, we're going to be getting into the final... Um, expansion characters uh, 
two dates. Uh, they were supposed to come out in 2019. They came out early 2020. And that's Double Trouble. Talk to you later. Have fun.